Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. On the series strategy game, and we are returning to our South Korea run in Democracy 4. We are trying to turn the country into a liberal utopia, and we have started doing that by, well, I guess we have pretty much focused on the police force. So, uh, for now, we have introduced Community Policing Race Discrimination Act, uh, then we have uh, dropped the racial profiling, we've reformed the prison services, um, and we've increase the funding of the police actually. So we are doing a lot of in, in the police sector, but we are also trying to do various other things. We are increasing worker rights, we are increasing um, the, well, we did drop state pensions, uh, but we are also trying to do a little bit for the environment, specifically for the, um, for the transportation sector. And the reason for that is we are still, still doing very badly in, in environmental terms. You can see environment is pretty deep down here. We have increased uh, pollution control, so that might bring it up a little bit, but it's really not going to be enough. And one of the big downsides, well, there are a lot of downsides to that, but one of the big ones is respiratory disease, which does make us extremely unpopular with parents. And that, in turn, is hindering our ability to grow, because a lot of our ministers are associated with that, and uh, having the parents have low opinion of us, does mean we are getting less political power by them, which means we can enact fewer laws and so on and so forth. Now, for this one, I want to continue our path towards uh, turning more people liberal. Now, there are of course some downsides, downsides to that, and one of that is pretty much anything that makes liberals more happy, makes conservatives less happy, and we need to kind of balance these approaches as we go here. We have uh, introduced a couple of things, especially the police force here, which do make the conservatives a little bit more happy. So we could pretty much maintain their happiness throughout the last couple of turns here, even though we are introducing some things that are going against them. While I'm guessing we are seeing a slight uptick here in the liberal happiness, but more importantly, we are shifting a lot of people here to become more liberal. And that is a very, very good and important thing, because that is indeed what we need to do to prepare that shift. Now. We don't really have enough political power to do anything here, but one thing I want to focus on now is the environment. And that is due to the, all of these things that we just discussed. Respiratory disease, pretty much driven by car usage and the low environment, or to put it differently, a high level of environment has the potential to bring that down. So that would be great. Car usage, big issue there. Car usage, also one of the main reasons that the environment is doing so badly. So it would be great to get rid of that or reduce that a little bit. The other big reason for that is, look at this, motorists, haters, absolutely haters. Big reason for that is the gridlock and the traffic congestion. So if we could get fewer people to be stuck in traffic, that would certainly be uh, pretty welcome. Right, uh, let's do gain some political power here. Ooh, very nice. We have gotten a good positive effect here. Egalitarian society, everyone likes that a little bit. Plus 12%, that's huge. That's very nice. Now... Unfortunately, one of our ministers is is incredibly in, unhappy with us. Um, I guess we don't do want to ban that. Liberals, ooh, liberals are unhappy about that. Oh, that's that's unexpected. And we are losing more and more donors. That's not good. On the other hand, the budget is looking fine. You want family planning now? I don't think I want that. But there's a big issue here with you being so disloyal. You are environmentalist liberal. I would love to keep you because I think we have the potential of keeping both of these groups extremely happy. We might lose her though. That would cost us a little bit of political power. It would drop business confidence and so on. So we could try to rearrange the cabinet, spend 10 political power to do that, but I don't think that is worthwhile. So let's uh, stick to the plan here. Let's continue to do what we have been doing. And one of the things that I think I've seen in between episodes is the Gender Discrimination Act. This one over here. Currently, so this is about uh, discrimination against women. Currently, this is funded at relatively low levels. If we could get into positive action over here, which personally I dislike a lot, we would do a couple of things. We would make liberals quite a bit more happy. That's good. Conservatives would become less happy, but liberal membership would go up by another 7%, so that's good. Democracy would go up, that's actually not that important. But more importantly, gender equality would go up by a lot. Now, gender equality is currently pretty low, and that does mean that liberals are pretty unhappy. If we increase that, liberals are going to be even more happy. 
So this has a huge effect on our liberal happiness, at least over a couple of turns and over the long term to increase their membership. It's not that expensive, so raising that is only two political power. So let's do that, and that is going to be great. Let me just cross that off my list here and do that. So that is one of the important things that we want to make over here. And it's pretty cheap, actually. So I think this is fantastic. It's a good step. Now, the other things that we need to keep in mind is the environment over here. Again, car usage, big problem and the environment and in and of itself problem. The environment is driven by a couple of things in the transport sector as well. Most importantly, car emission limits. Let's increase these. It's going to make motorists a little bit less happy. It's going to have a huge positive effect on the environment. It does take a while to kick in, but it is going to be positive and it is going to make our electric car transition a little bit more likely, which is also going to have some positive effects. So I think we can agree to that. It's not the least expensive, but I think it is okay. We do have still some political power. So the other thing I want to do then is the electric car initiative. This is also going to lead to, of course, more electric cars, but it's also going to make the environment much better. It's also going to increase environmentalist membership, which is not great because these guys do not really like us for now, but I think it is a good idea. So let's go ahead and do that. So another good thing, I would ultimately like to bring down uh, car usage even more, but there are certain limitations to what we can do in that regard. I would love to actually ban cars in cities, but we really don't have near enough political power to actually get going on that. Right, anything else then that we can do for the environment? Let's actually check. So these are all good things that are going to come into play. This is not actually that useful. Micro generation grants, it's only going to have a very limited effect. Clean fuel subsidy, it's only going to have a limited impact as well. And it would have negative effects because it would drive up car usage. I don't want that. We do have eight political power left. I think there are some things under economy that do increase the environment. I don't quite remember how much, but this is important because it's going to increase environmentalist happiness and the environment it's going to capital make capitalists a little bit less happy so that's not great because a lot of people are capitalist as three quarters of the population here but i do really want to prevent john sean from uh resigning over here and i think that would be a good thing to do that you know what let's do it so what's our what are the effect over here it's pretty great. It actually has a huge positive effect on the environmentalists and the environment over eight turns even. So that's good. I like it. That's that's nice. Good. Um, under welfare, I think we also want to do a tobacco awareness campaign just to bring down tobacco usage um, over time, which is also going to help with the respiratory disease and hopefully at some point make parents a little bit, a little bit less crummy at least. Um, so that I think is a good idea. Anything else then that we want to do? Hmm. I don't think there is anything specifically extremely cheap that we want to do. Alcohol awareness, useful, but not really. City farms, no. I mean, vertical farms does have the effect of driving down congestion a little bit, which is helpful, but not that that important. Free parenting classes might actually be a super useful thing to do as well and keep the country tidy campaign. More environmentalists, more happiness, and helping out the environment. You guys are pretty numerous. You're mildly unhappy, but we are bringing this up through a couple of policies here, right? Specifically, clean energy subsidies. And ultimately, once pollution and so on goes down, that might be a very good spiral. This, on the other hand, would make parents a little bit more helpful. And parents are mildly satisfied, which should drive up the approval rating of all of these three guys here. I think it's a good idea to do that. You know what? Let's do keep the country tidy for now. We're going to do that. It has minimal effects on all of these things, but it is kind of a nice thing to do. Right, next turn over here. Ooh, gridlock has gone. That's great. Um, this is not so good, especially for the um, election. But on the other hand... We were doing relatively fine for the for the popularity here. 
it's mostly the ministers that I'm concerned about, but we are actually gaining more political capital now than we did in the beginning of the game. So that's a huge, huge positive thing for us. We could even think about saving up more political capital and banning cars completely. You know what? I think I want to do that. Right, let's spend at the most ooh, two political power. What can we do spend two political power on? I'm guessing some, some cycling campaigns. Subsidized school buses. You know what? E ooh, no, that's too expensive to raise. Could raise it a little bit, but that's pretty much meaningless. How are you doing? Liberals. I mean, liberals should start to like us a little bit more. You're still considered slightly unhappy. I mean, there are a couple of events here that we really didn't have that much control over. Single, I would have expected liberals to be a little bit more supportive of that. DNA database. Some of these things are going to go away over time. But it is going to take some time to for that to develop. And I would really love to keep you. I mean, the grid lock has gone, so that should mean that at least... Oh, that probably means that environment uh, that the GDP here goes up quite a bit, which means that we're going to have a harder time actually bringing the environment under under control. Hmm. Okay, that's not great. Right. Let's let's look for some some cheap policy here in the order of magnitude of two, um, two political power tax. Anything? No, nothing that I want. Free pass passes. That's ex surprisingly expensive. You would think that uh, the more contagious or more debatable policies are a little bit more expensive in terms of political power, but it's really not always the case. So, hmm. Well, healthy eating campaign might not be the worst. Free eye tests? No, that's more expensive. Youth club subsidies? You know what? Let's do that. I think the young people are pretty much hate us for now, um, and it does help to make them a little bit more happy. Right. Let's see whether we can get to 40 political power. Stream offers birthday song. Uh, we're going to accept that offer. It's going to make the parents actually like us a little bit less. That's not good. Um, I knew about the conservatives. Didn't think the um, the uh, environmentalists would be crummy about that. We are going to get a water shortage. That's not good. But oh my, what can we do? Ah, oh, but we can't go for that. Ah, it's unfortunate. So close, so close. 38 political power. I would have hoped that we would go to 40 and we could ban cars. There was a glimmer of hope there, but um, yeah, we can't. Right, so that does mean I think we should shift a little bit more to the liberal approval now. There's a lot of people that are liberal at this point, so let's try to get rid of the things that make them extremely unhappy. And I think one of them is... Let's actually look at the membership first, because I think gated communities. Now, gated communities make conservatives extremely happy... But they do bring down liberal membership. And the ratio here is basically 1 to 4, I'm guessing. Yeah, 1 to, one to 3, 1 to 4. Um, and that should be approximately the ratio now of popularity. So doing this shouldn't really change much. It's going to bring down uh, up equality a little bit. And it's going to make even more people more liberal. So we're going to cancel that. And that should help us drive more people being... Um, being liberal, so I think we can go a little bit more all out in this now Right, and uh, let's see what you hate internet censorship. Yeah, that actually is hated by a lot of people Except for conservatives the one thing I'm I'm crummy about is cyber warfare If we got rid of internet censorship that would drive up cyber warfare which does have a negative effect on GDP so here's the one thing that I'm going to do that uh, liberals dislike, and that is I'm going to increase the funding of the intelligence services uh, in the hope of getting rid of the cyber warfare problem. And then we can get rid of the in internet censorship um, to sort of counter mandate that effect. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good idea. Right. Nevertheless, uh, we do have enough money here to, I guess, bring down, bring down wiretapping. Actually, no one really loves that. That's that's good to see. So that will make a large proportion of our population instantly a lot more happy. And I like that idea. Good. Good, good, good. Right. What else can we then do on the 
economy side. We could actually do this. Environmentalists would become more happy. But notice that this is not actually improving the environment itself. So I think that's not what we're going to do. We could go for fuel efficiency standard, but notice that that brings up car usage and it doesn't bring it down, uh, which would be a little bit more what we need. Now, what else can we do? I think parroting classes might be a good idea just to make the, uh, is it here? Family planning is useful. No, 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 but that's not what I mean. I mean the free parenting classes. It's relatively cheap. It makes parents a little bit more happy. It brings up gender equality. So all of these things are good things because it makes liberals and parents more happy. And again, parents are just one of the cornerstones really of the people that we do need to make happy. Right, um, anything else then? Well, desalination plants, these things might help with the water shortage. I'm not sure they do, but they might. The other thing that could be helpful is water meters. You know what? I'm guessing that these are going to be helpful and they're also going to help the environment. So let's do it. Right, there we go. We are going to get the water shortage, but let's see what that does. Makes farmers pretty unhappy and brings up food prices. By quite a bit, actually. Okay, so we should try to bring that down. We are actually bringing that down. Had we done that a little bit earlier, we would have prevented it. Mm, but there we go. And one of our ministers has resigned. Not good, not good at all. We do still run a surplus, but yeah, everyone is a little bit unhappy about that. Now, I think we are still far enough away from the election, so that isn't isn't a terrible thing. Oh, but notice that uh, by, at this point, really conservatives dislike us, farmers dislike us, wealthy people dislike us. But how are liberals looking? You should become a lot more happy, my friends. Why are you not immediately jumping in your happiness? We've gotten rid of gated communities, wiretapping, well, intelligence services, that does, you do hate that, don't you? Cyber warfare, it is going to come down, but it's going to come down over six turns, so it's going to take a while for that to come into effect. How's the environment looking? Can't even find it. Oh, Jesus, it's really, really going down. Not great, I mean, some of these things are going to help out, but they're going to take so long to come into effect. And car usage is still, still so problematic here. The gig economy does not help with that. And it's making trade unions a lot, a lot less happy. And we have 18 political power here. So I think what we could do is we could try to increase workers' rights. That should get rid of the gig economy. Labour laws. If we bring that up to, let's say, over here. Gig economy would go down by 8 percentage points. That juice just might not be enough. Yeah, we need to bring it down by around 18. Huh. You know what? I'm still going to do that. Because it might just mean that we can spend 8 political power next time. And that could be enough to bring it down completely. Oh, uh, yeah, we do need to hire someone over here. So... Let's see. Welfare. Middle income trade unionists? No. You would lose loyalty very quickly. Middle income capitalists? Uh, I'm guessing the same. Anyone? Commuter middle income? Why are you all middle income? Motorist capitalists? Well, motorist dislikers. Middle income environmentalists, but you're very strong at campaigning. Parents motorists. Okay, you know what? Middle income environmentalists it is. It's not the best because middle income are going to be perpetually unhappy about the pretty high level of income tax uh, that we are running. So that's not good. We could do something something like mortgage tax relief, uh, but we don't really have the money to do that, I think. I am pretty happy that we are running a big surplus here because that means that the debt interest that we are still paying is going to go down as we are paying off um, a lot of our debt. How much debt do we actually have? Well. In 100 quarters, we would be running out of debt. So that's at least nice. Uh, GDP is probably maxing out here um, as a somewhat inadvertent effect of what we're doing. Okay, the environment is doing... Ooh, environmental conserva conservation aid. That's great. The environment plus 40%. That's huge. Ah, but we're going to get a doctor strike. 
because we brought up the labor laws. Ah, Jesus. That's utterly unfortunate. I did not see that one coming, and I should have. That is going to make parents and retired people absolutely smashingly haters. And there's only very limited stuff that you can do. And that is pretty much maxing this out. But notice, this is 14 trillion. If we increase that by the amount of stuff that we can, so that would bring that to, let's say, 23. 23. Yeah, that's, that's not a big change over here. And that is not even guaranteed to lose us the Doctor Strike. We'll need to see about that. Unfortunate, very unfortunate. Okay, you are coming down. But we need that to come down by another 8% or so. How much are we, are we making? Nearly enough, nearly enough uh, to get to 40 political power and ban cars. Well, it's not meant for now. Water cannons, you are extremely upset about those. You know what, that barely costs us anything to cancel, so let's do that. Intelligence services, I can't do much about that, but tear gas, I can. CCTV cameras, now these are making conservatives a little bit more happy, but it's also a membership issue. On the other hand, we can't afford to cancel that for now. We do have the 16 political power to actually change the labor laws again. But it would only drive up the, the doctor's shortage. How wide is the trigger point here? Wide enough that we're going to have a huge problem bringing that down. Okay, so I'm not going to increase that further for now. There's just no way. Pollution is coming down. That's great. Is that because the environment is starting to look a little bit better finally? Yeah, but a huge effect of that is the is the event uh, which is gradually going to decline. So we can't trust that to remain there for a long time. Really want to get rid of the cyber warfare so I can get rid of the internet censorship. North Korea threat? We're never going to get rid of that. Adult education subsidies. You know what? That is some nice thing. But here's the thing. If we get rid of the skills shortage, GDP would go up even further, which would bring down the environment and several other things too. So I think that's not ideal. Can we do more public services like stamp out racism or something? Yeah. That should increase liberalism further and decrease racial tensions, um, which in turn is also going to... Racial tensions? Yeah, the lower that is, the higher liberal membership is. But it's pretty much nil anyway, so I guess that's fine. A right to privacy, you know what, that is another good one. Liberals pretty happy about that. GDP doesn't decrease a little bit, uh, but liberal membership is also going to increase. So I think you guys are going to be super numerous and you should be. You Come on, you should be pretty happy. Okay, water shortage is gone. That's nice. But we've got the doctor strike. Health, parents, absolutely horrible thing for us. Wages. I actually have a positive effect on that. Labor laws also increase that. Yeah, we pretty much need to max out state healthcare service. That's the big issue. You pretty much need either completely privatized or completely um, state healthcare service. It's sort of the, the mixture that, that drives that down. And this is, of course, being driven down by the state healthcare service. If we had that, if we didn't have the state healthcare service, this would be pretty much nearly at the top of things. And that would be enough to bring that down. So we can go either way. We can go either full out. Ooh, this is, this is something that we do need to address as well. 
Um, let's see, briefly look at that. So that should be under economy, I think. And green electronics initiative is obviously what we need. 23 political power. Hmm. Can't afford that for now. Oh, there's also an event. Um, yeah, we are going to ban non-LED. Liberals again hate that. Interesting. But environmentalists do like it. You guys should be a lot happier than... You're not giving me credit for what I'm doing here for you. Police drones. It's not that expensive. Let's cancel it. National service is a big one. It's pretty expensive to cancel. Makes liberals and young people hate us. It does give us strong leadership and patriots and conservatives do like it. There are not that many conservatives left though, so that's good. Death penalty. I think we should actually start to look at the at the education too. If you look at not science funding but secularity of education it's over here. If we brought that up significantly, liberals would become a lot happier. Religious people hate it. But it also brings up liberal membership and tech advantage, actually. I think it's a good policy to, to go for. Yeah, let's do save up some over here. Maybe we're going to do something. Ooh! Ooh, no! Ludite riots! Wages would have a positive effect. Police is doing that. I think this is actually because we've got the tear gas and the water cannons. Huh. Still, violent crime is nil. Crime is nil. The productivity drop is not good. Due to various effects. But GDP is still looking okay. And I think GDP is actually going to recover once we're going to get rid of the cyber warfare, which should happen next turn. Um, people smuggling, we are going to allow them to stay. That is going to make ethnic minorities happy. There is another event associated with that that is not so great. But I think for now, this is pretty good. Okay, we've got the 35 political power. You know what? Let's go for it. Let's look at the education here. It is pretty expensive. Oh, that would be a theoretical rise. We can't actually rise that, that far. But again, makes liberals extremely happy. Religious are going to be super unhappy about that. But look at how much it is going to drive religious membership down. And then let's have a look at how many religious people we actually have. Only 2% of the population. And after that, it's going to be no one. And if it, if it is no one, that actually means we can uh, modify items like this, like the abortion law here, make a lot more people liberal, make the liberals a little bit happy. It makes religious people super unhappy. But guess what? There is no one who's um, a religious <laughs> conservative anymore. So... That is great. Okay, but you know what? I think now is a good place to put in a cut. We're pretty much halfway through our first term here. And we do need to be mindful that we only have two potential uh, terms here, at least by the current constitution. That is, of course, subject to change. Uh, but at least we should keep that in mind. Respiratory disease, it is coming down, but ever so slowly. Um, and the environment, at least, is improving. Car usage, just look at how slowly that comes down. That being said, if we only had a little bit more political capital, we would be doing so much better. That being said, hope you enjoyed. Do leave a like and, know, and let me know what policies you would like to see here. Bye-bye, guys.